This is obviously a time of, there's a humanitarian crisis at the border. Uh, it is a difficult time. Uh, the U.S. government is facing uh, this very challenging situation. And then for whatever reason, uh, this nominee this, this for, for, to be head of ICE is kind of ignominiously just thrown by the side of the road. Um, doesn't that concern you? Doesn't that, yes, of course, the president has every right to do it. He can, he's the exec, chief executive. He can do whatever he want, mm -hmm. wants. But, but isn't the way this is being done without consulting uh, you and your colleagues in the Senate, without con consulting Secretary uh, Nielsen, doesn't that kind of undermine the whole argument that this is a real crisis that we're in? Well, Jake, I'm hesitant to comment because I, j I just don't know why the president did it. I don't know the background. I mean, you know, you, uh, if it's Mr. Miller had second thoughts, it, it, he probably should have expressed those, uh, those thoughts, his first thoughts, a little, little, uh, a little while ago. Uh, but the world's not going to spin off its axis here. We do need a competent person, uh, an aggressive person who's the head of ICE. But, but we've got bigger problems than that, that frankly, right, right now at the border. And I know we've been through this the last six months where the Democrats say we don't have a problem at the border and the Republicans say we do. we got a problem at the border. Oh, yeah, uh, absolutely. It's not like the problem we used to have. Yeah, absolutely. But we've got a serious problem. Sure, especially with all these families coming and there isn't, there isn't a, a, the housing uh, to take them all in and, and, and keep them. Um, I want you to take a listen uh, to the secretary. Well, well, Go ahead, sir. Well, I was just going to say that there are two problems. Number one, our asylum laws need to be changed. And number two, you know, rather than, rather than cutting off the money to El Salvador and, and Guatemala and, and our other Central American countries, I, I would like to see the president call a, a, an immigration summit with, with pre the president of Mexico and El Salvador and Guatemala and Nicaragua and Honduras and let's say, how can, let's say, how can we solve this problem? Similar to what we did with Plan Colombia, when we had a lot of problem with, problems with the drug cartels and, and cocaine coming out of Colombia in the late 1990s and in, in 2000, uh, uh, into the, the next decade, we sat down with the president of Colombia. We put up some of the money in return for specific commitments. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but I think that would help a lot. But, but the, the thing that would help the most is to design some asylum laws. It looks like somebody designed them on purpose. All you have to do right now, Jake, as you know, is make it to American soil, say the magic words, you're turned free into the country, you're told to, back, to come back in two years to court, and of course nobody ever turns back up. Well, you know, uh, you, could, you, could, you could drive over around D.C., pick the first person sleeping under, under the interstate and say, can you draw us, uh, uh, up some asylum laws? And theirs would make better sense than the ones we have right now. I, I know you're speaking hyperbolically. I, I think statistics show that most people do show up for their hearing. But I take your point, Central Americans and the asylum laws, that is the situation. You, you talked about a summit. Homeland Security Secretary Kirsten Nielsen actually had a summit. I think it was last week in Honduras. I know. She, she was on uh, Chris. I know. It's she, not enough. Right. She was on Chris Cuomo's show. The president needs to do it. She was on Chris Cuomo's show last night. I want, I want to see what you think about something. Uh, let, let's roll that sound. In this environment right now, where you want focus on the kids and the families, why is the president going down to view fencing and not going to see the kids? Well, I think part of that's just a, uh, it's an optic. Now, I know you're, ta you're talking about the humanitarian crisis. I'm talking about the humanitarian crisis. Both of us have been talking about it for a long time. The president is very fix uh, fixated and focused on, on the wall. Now, I understand in his view, the wall is part of the solution to the humanitarian crisis because it will deter people from coming. But don't you think there's also this other side of it? Uh, and if the president went and, and met with these refugees, that might also help get something done? Well, yes. The short answer, yes. Look, we do need a wall, but a wall alone is not going to stop the problem. We, we do have some unsavory people coming across the border, gang members, drug dealers, but we've got a lot of people coming from Central America out of fear, not hunger, fear. Uh, th their countries are being run by gangs. I saw a, a, a recent survey done by Vanderbilt University, something like depending on the country, between a third and a half of the people in our Central American countries have been uh, victims of crime within the past year, and usually it's extortion. And so they're leaving. And that's why I want to see, and I'm glad that the uh, Homeland Secretary, Homeland Security Secretary went down there, but the President, 
It, this is a job for the president. He needs to call a Central American uh, uh, immigration summit, invite the president of Mexico, the fr president of presidents of the Northern Triangle uh, countries, mm -hmm. saying, look, let's sit down. You've got a problem in your country. It's causing a problem in my country. We're willing to put up some money in return for specific commitments. We did the same thing in 1999 with Planned Columbia with Colombia. Now, that's the root of this problem. Mm -hmm. We also need to ask for some cooperation from our Democratic friends. We, we need to change the asylum laws. They make no sense. Okay. Uh, Senator Kennedy, stay right there. We have some breaking news, and I want to get your reaction to it. Some lawyers hired by President Trump have sent a letter to the Treasury Department after a key House Democrat demanded President Trump's tax return. CNN's Pamela Brown uh, joins me now. Uh, Pamela, what are you learning? Well, we're learning that lawyers that the president uh, has hired to, to represent him in this tax fight just sent a letter uh, moments ago to the Treasury Department pushing back on this request from the House Ways and Means Committee chairman for the president's tax returns over the last six years. These are lawyers from Consovoy McCarthy Park, Park Law Firm saying that uh, the chairman does not have a legitimate purpose in requesting the president's tax returns and that this would set a bad president, saying that this is all about politics. Here's uh, one of the sentences from the letter. Uh, uh, Jake saying his request is a transparent effort by one political party to harass an official from the other party because they dislike his politics and speech. So basically saying that even if they do say they have a legitimate uh, purpose here, that really it's all about politics and not liking the president because he's in a, a different party. It also uh, notes the fact that the president's tax returns are under audit, uh, according to the president. Now, as we know, Jake, tax returns can still be released even if they are under audit. Um, and they also asked the Treasury Department to consult with the Department of Justice on this before doing anything, saying that this is an, is an unprecedented request. Um, an administration official telling my colleague Jim Acosta that uh, lawyers are willing to fight this all the way to the Supreme Court. It appears, Jake, this fight just beginning. All right, Pamela Brown, thank you so much for that breaking news. Let me bring back Senator John Kennedy from Louisiana. Uh, Senator, your, your reaction to the president's legal team's letter to the Treasury Department? Jake, I will be very blunt. Chairman Neal, powerful man, head of ways and means. I know he's an adult, but I don't think he's like a real adult. He says that he needs Trump's tax returns. He says it's, it's policy, not politics. He has said, I think on CNN, that the reason he needs them is that he needs to determine how well the IRS is auditing taxpayers. Uh, I, I, I can't believe he really thinks the American people are going to fall for that. It, it, it must really suck to be that dumb. Look, this is very simple. Mr. Neal wants to screw with the president. He doesn't think the president ought to be president. Well, you know, words can't express how much I don't care. It's not Mr. Neal's call. The American people have chosen Donald Trump as president. If you don't like it, in two years you can vote against him. In the meantime, don't screw with him. Let him try to be president. Now, Mr. Neal is not in good faith. Nobody believes he's in good faith. Um, he is. This is wildly dishonest. This is thoroughly in bad faith. And I don't blame the, Trump, the president for pushing back. There's no requirement that he turn over his taxes. If I were running for president, would I turn over my taxes? Yeah. But there's no requirement. And Trump said, I'm not going to turn over my taxes. They're being audited. The American people knew that when, when they, they voted for him or didn't vote for him. He won the election. And, and Mr. Neal, you know, I don't mean any disrespect, but he's not fooling anybody. He just wants to get these taxes to screw with the president. Well, you said you, you can vote against him, but enough is enough. You uh, you said you said you don't mean any disrespect, but you said it must suck to be that that dumb. Uh, let me just take the opportunity to say to, to Chairman Neal that uh, if he wants to come on the show, uh, he is more than welcome to come and defend himself. But uh, we're running out of time, Senator Kennedy, and I, I know you want to talk about this new legislation uh, that would stop government employees from using NDAs, non-disclosure agreements from silencing workplace sexual harassment and sexual assault victims. You have an op-ed on this. You used Harvey Weinstein as an example of how NDAs hurt people. I should point out your bill would just protect government workers. Uh, does that go far enough? 
I wish we could go further, and maybe eventually we will. It's real simple. It says if you're a federal official or a state official, and you're accused of sexual harassment, and you settle the lawsuit, you can't keep it quiet unless the victim wants to keep it quiet. Um, no non-disclosure agreement unless the victim agrees. If you're spending taxpayer money, taxpayers need to know. Even, even if they, uh, you're not spending taxpayer money, voters still need to know. Uh, just because you're accused of something doesn't mean you're guilty, but these facts need to, or at least the allegations need to come out, and I think it'll cut, cut out a lot of people acting like pigs. All right, Republican Senator John Kennedy from the great state of Louisiana, thank you so much for your time, sir. We appreciate it. Thanks, Jake.